without question, this is the most important one you can do. If you don't do anything else tonight that we talked about, do that one thing. And not only will it change your health, it will change your whole life. It will make your whole life better. Now, nutrition. Let's spend some time on nutrition. That is an industry that has spent millions of dollars convincing you guys y'all don't know how to eat. you got to have this book. you got to have that book or this expert or that expert. Now, I'm, I'm big on nutrition. I, I, I think nutrition is critically important. And several years ago, I took a diplomat-level program in nutrition. At the end of the two-year program, I'd have been a diplomat in nutrition and a certified clinical nutritionist. About halfway through the program, I dropped it. And here's why. I dropped it. The first month, in the 16 hours, uh, every other month, we'd have to go to these seminars. And the first 16 hour seminar, I came back and I came to my patient and said, okay, here's what we need to do. You need to take this vitamin, this mineral, da, 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 this amount of protein, this amount of carbohydrates. This is what you need to do to maximize your body's health and healing so that you get the best results. And that's what I put all my patients on. All right? And then two months later, I went to the next seminar and they had a different expert up there. And I came back and said, okay, hang on a second. You don't need this when you actually need this. And you need to decrease the protein by this amount. And, and then two months later, I went back and different expert. Okay, hang on, let's go back. And after about a year of this, I said, okay, time out. We've been eating since the beginning of time. Why has it all of a sudden become so complicated? All right? So after a year of that, I've now boiled nutrition down into two simple rules. All right? If you do these two rules, you'll do pretty good. Okay? Rule number one, God made. Rule number two, 80-20. Now what do I mean by God made? What do I mean by that? The closer you get your food, the straight out of the ground, straight off the tree, or straight out of the pasture, the better the food is for you. The more man manipulates it, processes it, heats it up, takes away from it, adds to it, changes it, the more we mess with it, the worse it is for you. Until you get all the way over here to the extreme, which whenever you pick up a carton of food or anything and you see this word, from now on I want you to change this word in your mind from artificial to toxic. Just change it. Artificial flavoring, toxic flavoring, toxic coloring, toxic sweetness. Across the board. Now, this is a rule I've had for 20 years. I haven't been proven wrong yet. Every time they come out with some artificial something that's supposed to be better than, the, than what nature can do, give it time and it'll, it'll be proven to not be as good as nature. It'll, it'll cause liver disease, cancer disease, or cancer, or, or, or one of the three there, okay? So, now, I might be proven wrong sometime in the future on that, but right now I haven't been beat on that one. So, the closer you get your food to the real stuff, the better you are, okay? It's that simple. Now, 80-20, before we do the 80-20 rules, I'm going to give you guys a quick test. Anybody that fails my test, I'm going to take you over to Hastings as soon as we finish. I'm going to buy you a book on nutrition. I'm going to sit down and tutor you on nutrition, okay? <laughs> Here we go. Now, which is better for you? I did not say which tastes better, okay? So don't go down that path, all right? Which is better for you? Baked chicken or fried chicken? Baked. Okay. Baked. Which is better for you? Steamed vegetables or raw vegetables or fried okra, fried squash, Steamed. Which is better for you, apple pie or a fresh organic apple? Fresh organic apple. Okay, which is better for you, a 44 ounce Big Gulp Coke from 7 Eleven or fresh filtered water? Fresh filtered water, definitely. Okay, so you guys are all nutrition experts, okay? <laughs> so, my second rule 80% of the time, make the right choice, okay? Baked over fried, raw over cooked, all right? 20% of the time, enjoy yourself. I think our bodies are incredibly durable, okay? So if you're eating right and doing right 80% of the time, 20% of the time, enjoy yourself. Now, this is a great time of year to talk about this rule, all right? <laughs> <laughs> because I promise you, Christmas rolls around, I'm going to choke down all the sweet potato pie I can choke down, all right? <clears throat> and I'm going to be going to some parties and, 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 and eating some candy and, and enjoying myself, okay? So if you do that, guys, I, most of the time you're okay now. Let's qualify that. If you have a major health issue, all right, if you have cancer or, or major heart disease or severe arthritis, you may want to switch that to about 95.5 for a while. All right? Let your body heal and recover for a while. All right? So if you're going through a major crisis, you may want to be a little more strict. But most of the time, that'll get it for you. Now, is it good to do major nutritional counseling and these, and these major diets and crazy stuff? It is good, all right? But if you're going to do it, you need to get with somebody that really knows what they're doing. All right? If you just go out there and read some book and start eating some crazy diet or popping a bunch of vitamins thinking they're harmless, you're going to cause more damage to yourself than good most of the time. So if you want to do nutritional therapy, is what I call it, get with somebody that knows what they're doing. All right? Don't just kind of shotgun it. Now, exercise. Exercise is another industry that's done the same thing. It's trying to convince everybody they don't know what they're doing. 
You need this special exercise or that special exercise or this expert or that expert to teach you how to exercise. <clears throat> it's just not true, guys. All right? What is exercise? Moving. Movement. Thank you. That's all it is. All right? It's just movement. Now, is it important? It is critically important, guys, especially for a chiropractor. You talk to any chiropractor that's been in practice for 40 or 50 years, they will tell you 50 years ago it was far easier getting patients better. All right? It was very common to see patients hold adjustments for six, eight months. Okay? Now, if you can get a patient to hold an adjustment for a month, you're doing pretty good. All right? So what's changed? What's the only thing? Now, all these things factor into it, but I think exercise is the biggest one. Now, think about this, guys. How many of you guys remember the day when opening a garage door meant actually reaching down and opening a garage door? How many of y'all remember the day when cutting the grass meant actually pushing the mower, not just walking behind it or riding on it? Okay. Do y'all remember the day when washing clothes meant sticking it in a deal and pushing it down there and sticking it in that deal and cranking the clothes through the deal and then going out and doing this for 30, 45 minutes? All right. When digging a ditch involved actually doing this, not just sitting in a deal with a joystick and doing this? Okay. Here's my point. 50 years ago, just living life on a regular basis was exercise. Just surviving. Cooking dinner was exercise. Cast iron pots and skillets and stuff were heavy. You got exercise just on a regular basis. Today, life is good. We've got garage door openers. We've got remote controls. We've got power steering. You can drive your car with one finger now. Now they've got cars that park themselves. Have you seen these things? <clears throat> All right, so because of that, that's creating some major instabilities in the core muscle groups. Okay? You've got to compensate for that. You have got to start exercising. Okay? Now, how much do you need to exercise? An hour a day, six days a week. Now, I don't anybody throw anything at me again. I know that's a lot of people, Dr. Brenner, there's no way I'm exercising an hour a day, six days a week. <clears throat> now, the reason most people say that is because they're thinking, going to the gym, getting all the workout outfit on, you know, they're talking about two or three hour process and doing that. You don't have to do that. Excuse me. <coughs> you don't have to do that. Again, we said exercise is movement. So all you have to do is while you're at home watching TV, watching American Idol or, or the next dance star or whatever it is, um, get down on your floor and exercise. Just think back to when you were a kid. If you really need a personal trainer, call me. i got two of them for you, a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old. <laughs> they will get you down and work you out. And I used to have a lot of fun when they were younger working out at the house. I'd say, guys, what are we going to do? Dad, let's do bear crawls. So we'd bear crawl around the house. Let's do crab walks. Let's do sit-ups. Let's do jumping jacks, all right? Now, if you've got bad knees, bad shoulders, bad back, you've got to be smart, all right? Don't start doing a bunch of jumping jacks if you've got bad knees, all right? Do what you can do, but start exercising those knees, even if you've got bad knees, all right? The, one of the biggest causes, contributors to arthritis, in my opinion, is, is um, the sedentary lifestyle that we have. Again, if you go back <clears throat> 50 years ago, arthritis was almost unheard of, I mean, it, it, except for an extremely old. I'm seeing kids in here today in their 20s and 25 that have severe arthritis. Okay? And I think the exercise issue is a big part of that. Okay? Now, if you want to read a really good book on this to really see how exercise can affect your health, it's a book called Younger Next Year. It's a great book on that. All right? Pick that book up. It really explains how exercise not only stabilizes the muscles and stuff, but how it actually stimulates your body to heal and repair, which helps prevent heart disease, cancer. And again, guys, it's not about treating heart disease and cancer. It's about preventing it from ever st starting, getting your body back to where it's supposed to be. All right, I tell every, every patient that comes in, I tell them, my goal is to live to 120. <clears throat> now, why do I say 120? Because from what I understand, the geneticists have determined that's how old we're supposed to live. All right? Now, our life expectancy, I believe, Dr. Roby, you can help me out with this. Is it 73 now? Uh, 73, depending 74? on if you're male or female, yeah. <clears throat> Around right. that, yeah. So, so women live a little longer. A little longer. That's because or it seems like it. stressful lives as we did not <laughs> We're dying at about half the potential. That should be shocking to you also. If we're designed to live to 120 and we're dying at this point, we need to change that. Mm -hmm. all right? So my goal is to live to 120. And a lot of people say, Dr. Brim, you're crazy, man. Why do you want to live to 120? Because they're thinking at about 73 from that point on, life is miserable. That's what most people are thinking. Yeah. All right? They're thinking, okay, you're going to spend the next 30, 40, 50 years of your life in a nursing home or, or walking around. That's not what I'm talking about, guys. I'm talking about adjusting patients up until I'm about 90, 95 years old. I'm talking about riding my dirt bike until I'm 100, 110. I'm not slowing down on any of that stuff, okay, guys? The guy that wrote the book Younger Next Year, he was 74, I think. I'm going to have to read the book again to get his age. He was in his 70s, and he still skis deep powder slopes of Utah daily. He goes out now. If you've ever skied deep powder, that's hard. That is work, guys.